Welcome to another episode of Money You Should Ask. I'm your host, Bob Wheeler, and in this episode, we're going to explore, question, examine, converse, dig deep, expose, laugh, and cry about the money beliefs, money blocks, and life challenges of our next guests. Turn up the volume, listen, learn, and laugh. I'd like to thank our sponsor, The Money Nerve, a financial resource that helps you have a healthier relationship with money. Do you feel shame around your past financial decisions? Do you feel alone in your financial struggles? Do you self-sabotage your potential financial successes? Do you keep making the same choices, expecting different results? The Money Nerve has just launched a new online course called The Course to Financial Freedom. To learn more, go to themoneynerve.com forward slash course. The Money Nerve has an offer to all Money You Should Ask listeners for a 25% discount on the course. Use code MYSA, all caps, 25 and start your course to financial freedom now. Thanks again to our sponsor, The Money Nerve. Today's guests are Joanne Davidson and Maddie, her stepdaughter. And Maddie, I'm just going to give you a Maddie name. So instead of giving you a last name, we're just going to let it be one name, sort of like Madonna or a whole bunch of other people these days. Um, so Joanne is uh, in production. She has a company called Happy Harley Productions. Yes. Hey there, buddy. And um, in the creative side. And then uh, Maddie is a sophomore at Columbia College in South Carolina. She's there on a softball scholarship and she's into behavioral science and social justice. So Joanne and Maddie, welcome. It's great to have you on the show. Excited to be on. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. So, I you know it was exciting to find out that Maddie was going to be on. I you look so young, but I guess I'm getting older because I was like, are, you know, are you going to tell me she's 14 or 12? She's 18. So <laughs> wow. Um, but so Maddie, I want to start with you. Uh, when did you first realize that uh, money might have value, or did you ever think that money had value? Um, for a lot of my childhood, I knew money had value because we didn't have a lot of it. So it was like if my mom gave me money just to go spend it on lunch, it was it was a big deal. And I knew I couldn't just spend it on anything because I'd probably be punished for that. But I've always kind of known how important money is and that I need to figure out a way of uh, obtaining it. Okay. And did you um, – do you get an allowance? Did you get an allowance? How did you make money as a kid? Um, I got an allowance here and there, like doing chores, but mainly it was so I could feed myself at school because I didn't get the uh, free lunches that they offered at the school. So I had to pay for it every day. Okay. And what is your favorite thing to um, spend money on? Um, I definitely have a guilty, guilty pleasure for uh, clothes. (laughs) Okay. And why do you say guilty pleasure? Because I'll spend too much money on the shoes and t-shirts that I don't necessarily need, but I want them. Yeah. And what's the pleasure you get out of getting them? Like being able to show them off to your friends or? Yeah. And just uh, the confidence boost of knowing that I look okay. That I look like trendy, I guess. Okay. And um, do you save a lot of money? No, I don't. I'll admit it. (laughs) Okay. Um, well, what are some of the questions, like, as you're, you're heading off into the world, you've started college, um, I'm imagining that at college, there's people from all kinds of different uh, financial backgrounds, um, different ethnicity, um, different culture. Um, what would you, what would you, what are the things that are like that you worry about when it comes to money? Um, what I worry most about with money is, I don't really know how credit or savings or any of those things work. And I have an old, I have two older siblings that I've seen go through college and then go into the real world. And both of them seem almost like flabbergasted at the amount of things they need to worry about. And it was just thrown at them. And then my sister, for example, as soon as she graduated, suddenly had tons of debt due to her student loans. And now she has to figure out how to build credit, build a savings account and pay off her loans at the same time while trying to get her own place and basically join the workforce. And I always worry about um, getting a head start in that. And I don't want to feel 10 years behind in other people because they learn these things sooner than I did. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, Joanne, let me ask you this. So you've um, 
you've got a few years on Maddie. Um, just a smidge. Just a smidge. Um, <laughs> What are the things that you worry about financially um, presently? I think, well, because I'm, I guess, I own my own company and independent cro- contractor per se, um, just how things, because of what's going on with COVID right now, my world is group gatherings. I mean, basically, you know, you have the photographer, you have the crew, you have hair, makeup, talent, everything, and we're we're in groups. And I think for me, it's, figuring out how to, um, you know, thankfully I've saved some money, but also on spreading it out and, and hoping that, you know, if I get stuck, what is a loan that I can apply for? Is it because I have my own company? Can I do unemployment on myself for Mm -hmm. happy Harley for myself? If I get to that position and how long or what should I apply for basically? Right. And how, um, how do you feel about the future with no, not knowing when things are going to get back into full swing? I try and stay positive. I'm not, I mean, it does get my anxiety going. Um, and I sort of get into panic attacks or I'll wake up in the middle of the night. Um, but I try and stay positive. The, the only, I guess, comfort is that I'm not the only one going through it. Yeah. Everyone else is. So you can sort of lean on everyone else and see kind of which way they're going but it's it's always sort of ambiguous answers, and I tried this and went that way, and I'm that's great for them. But is it great for me, or you know, what's the next? I'm hoping by August we'll be up and going. From what I hear, some people are already working, and maybe end of July. But we'll see now that everything's opening up. Mm-hmm. If spikes start to cause everyone to put a brakes on it again, yeah. Now, I had this uh, thought as you were talking. Do you sit around with your associates and friends and talk about all your money worries or talk about where things are going to come from? I mean, is that something that you openly discuss with other people? Yeah, those that I that I feel comfortable that were sort of in, came up the ranks together or in the same positions or can kind of understand um, what's going on. I mean, the one good thing is we have a photographer set up a, a group chat more on – next steps of what, when we open up, how we're all going to be prepared and we're all going to be on the same wavelength. And, you know, hopefully that'll help our clients because we all work within the same clients feel confident and comfortable to keep proceeding with opening up. Um, you know, it's, it's reaching out. There's a photo photo assistant, um, that I talked to in Kansas, you know, a, a DP in Colorado. We're sort of all like, are you working? What are you hearing? What are they hearing? What loans were you applying for? I got denied by these. I didn't, I, you know, those sorts of things. Okay. Um, so it does help, but it also sometimes when I feel good and then talk to them, I feel even more freaked out of what's the next step. Okay. And Maddie, let me ask you this. Um, I know right now you're not able to be at school, but previously last year, um, in your first year, are do you talk with your friends about money? Is there more of a a pressure to like just present like everything's okay? Or is that something you feel like you can talk about? Um, money is definitely, money specifically isn't something we really discuss a lot. It's more of like how much money we'll be making in the future based off like our degree or we talk about all the money we're going to like be in debt for. Right. Like all the money <laughs> we're going to have to pay back and like how are we going to get scholarships and like loans and figuring out loans? Cause I'm at least grateful where I currently don't have to pay off my loans. I get good, uh, get good financial aid mm-hmm. from FAFSA, but um, some of my teammates and my friends are like, their parents are actively paying off things now mm-hmm. and they get charged every single semester from the school and they have all these financial worries and whether their scholarship is going to jump up. So that's definitely the side of money we talk about the most and it causes a lot of anxiety for all of us. Yeah. And now, I mean, jumping into a new city, new state, a new group of friends, um, do you have, are you super aware, slightly aware of how much money other, other students make? In other words, um, are you aware, oh, that's Betsy, she flies in on a private jet, or, oh, all of us are about the same. Like, I went to a school where literally some of the kids flew in on private jets. <laughs> I was not one of them. Um, (laughs) And so I'm just wondering, like, if you are aware of social status, of of economics and all that stuff, because it's it's maybe not spoken about, but it's under the surface. 
Um, I'm definitely aware because even if they aren't flying in on private jets, they have lived in the same home their whole life. They have the generational wealth. They have families they can fall back on. Whereas for me, like if I screw up and I am unable to pay my own loans, I don't know if I can fall back on my family to help me out. And I feel as though people who have more money, they aren't quite as stressed about school or if they are, it's not in the same way I am where like I need softball and I need my scholarship and I need FAFSA to get where I am. Whereas they could decide to just change their mind tomorrow and transfer to a different school and figure it out and they'll be, they'll be okay. Yeah. And do you have goals already set? Like I want to make a hundred thousand dollars five years after getting out of school, or I want to get my master's or have you started setting goals? Yeah, I've already set goals and tried to find the cheapest way to achieve them. So uh, my mom works in like college system in Nevada. So I've already made plans to come back here and get my master's while the grant and aid in Nevada is still available for me until I'm 26. Okay. So I want to take advantage of that opportunity because in my generation, it feels as though a bachelor's degree is like good, pat on the back, good job, you have a bachelor's degree, but do you have a master's? Because that's what really puts you ahead now, not a bachelor's anymore. Oh, it's a good thing I'm not young. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, exactly. I was ugh, I was just happy to get through four years. <laughs> yeah. I'm there with you, Bob. Oh, man, oh, man. Um, all right. Well, let me go. Joanne, did you, when you got out of, um, when you were younger, did you know that I wanted, that you wanted to go into production? Did you have any idea, like, here's where my life's going to be? Or No idea. And now you're here and you're I like. I stumbled into this. Yeah. So how did you I, get I here? literally. Yeah. I didn't even know this industry existed, which sounds so naive to say, but I mean, through high school, production, photography, I grew up with parents that it was very much the corporate America route. Okay. Um, so the creative stuff was like, oh, fun side course to take, but nothing that you could really make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. Then I started getting intrigued in sports photography, which was kind of my, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do that. Um, but it never really, I liked going to it, but I paid more attention watching it than with the camera watching it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still had a fascination. And when I finished, I went to university of Colorado. Um, I ended up after I graduated and moving back East, um, with my mom, which I was lucky enough that she said, come settle down. And we met someone, she had met someone that knew a photographer with a digital camera, yada, yada, got me down to New York. So I was working for him commuting into Manhattan and I was fortunate enough to stay at my aunt's so I didn't have to find a place right away um, and be in debt right away. And then from there, it sort of snowballed into where I met a fashion photographer. Um, well, I met a camera rep who introduced me to a fashion photographer who was looking for a studio manager. And then that's how it kind of just unfolded. So I was lucky in that sense to have people that could kind of guide me and, and not go too much debt right at the beginning. Cause mm -hmm. I knew that was a concern coming out of college. Like, I don't, I don't want to have to owe, you know, even more and credit card debt. My, my brother got into that and I knew that that was something not to do, but I didn't know how to get to the next step. So I sort of thankfully found my way. Yeah. Had I known about this when I went to college it would have been so much more helpful. Yeah. I would have probably been in the film industry. Right. With this. Okay. And were your parents supportive of you going into whatever you wanted to do or were they pretty much you should do corporate and be practical? My mother is. My mother's on the creative side and she's very much do what makes you happy, you know, try. We're always I'm always here. My parents got divorced okay. when I was young. My father was very much um, corporate America. I'm the youngest of five. You know, he put five kids through college. Yeah. So he was like, find the, I mean, he had his errors in money management. Um, but yeah, it was never, I mean, one brother's a banker. Two of my sisters are teachers. My brother, that's the one right above me, was the first one to kind of graduate without having a corporate or teaching degree. He was a fine art major. And that sort of threw my dad for a loop at first. <laughs> yeah. um, because we are, of the five of us, um, we're more on the creative side of things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And do you remember as a child or young adult, any money mantras or money sayings that your parents used to say to you, uh, as a kid, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I know 
being that my parents got divorced because my father got himself deep, deep into debt. We lived in Costa Rica and he would say he'd come to the States on, this is what I heard on jobs, but actually he was coming to try and get, you know, finances from his mom to help bail him out. So that was a bone of contention and always a red flag for my mom and are like, save, 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 save. Don't do this. Don't spend, you know, don't go on this fun trip when you should be working. Don't do this when you should be working which now I'm trying to find the balance of enjoying life and not working myself to death. Right. Kind of like, you know, squirrel, squirrel away, squirrel away, squirrel away, squirrel away. When it's like, you've got this money, enjoy some of it. How much time do you take for vacation a year? Um, (laughs) um, Michael has brought me more into making sure we try and take we were supposed to go beginning of april to go see maddie okay. but obviously that canceled that got canceled um but try and do two weeks out of the year if we can i'm i'm trying now that I, we have a four-year-old michael and i do um you know it makes me more aware of enjoying life mm-hmm. and the little moments and you know enjoying him growing up is reminding me of being a kid but before that i could work, you know, three, four years. And the only time off was going home for Christmas. Right. Um, really or Thanksgiving. Yeah. No, I hear you. It's a balance. And I think, uh, especially as people from the U S culturally, we're not encouraged to, uh, take time off. I'm, I find it amazing. Other people in other countries that like to take lots of time. (laughs) Oh yeah. I mean, my mom's from Argentina. They have, we've been down in January where it's amazing. Yeah where the, everyone's off for the month and they're all at the beach or out at the farms or all doing whatever. And you're just like, in the States, we do what? We, 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 we just try and scrape for two weeks. Right. Yeah. And even then we're like, I should yeah. be working. I should check my emails. Uh, totally. Yeah. Lots of fun. Great vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so relaxing. <laughs> uh, Maddie, what are the messages that you've gotten around money? Um, especially when you were younger, do you remember anything um, I've definitely gotten the money doesn't grow on trees and the same as what Joe was saying, it's the same thing as like saving money because it doesn't grow on trees. Like my mom has just come to understand that, oh, I can actually enjoy the money I work for and actually do things for myself. Oh. And like, and that, a big part of that is like my dad and the stuff that we've been through, like my mom's a breast cancer survivor. So after that happened, she was like, oh no, I'm enjoying my life. I'm not going to stop. But um, most of my childhood, it was always like, don't waste your money on something you don't need Mm -hmm. and try and keep as much of it as you can. Mm -hmm. And have you done much traveling? Um, Not for like I have, but not for just for the fun of it. Most of my traveling was for um, visits for colleges when I was getting recruited. Okay. And it was within like a one year span where I went to Washington for softball tournaments or I've gone to Oklahoma for softball tournaments. I would have been softball majority. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, What's the biggest difference you noticed about um, being on the West Coast or being in Nevada versus being in South Carolina? Hmm. (laughs) Um, It's really interesting coming (laughs) from the West Coast to the East Mm -hmm. Coast. Especially the Southeast, mm-hmm. just because the people are very different. They, their accents get me every time. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I think there's definitely more of a family like focus on like your family unit and family comes before everything. Yeah. There's definitely a lot more of that on the East Coast than on the West yeah. Coast. And uh, what do you miss when you're on the East Coast? What do you miss about the West Coast? I miss how um, relaxed and chill a lot of people are on the West Coast. <laughs> they're not very chill on the uh, East Coast. Well, that's because they're having to deal with and family and family units. <laughs> true. Yeah. We love them, but that adds a so whole layer. True. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, and so after you – so you want to get your master's. You're going to come back to Nevada. Um, and then mm-hmm. what do you want to do? Like, and, and, and what's the, the drive behind it? Um, I've been tossing up a lot of ideas on what I want to do. Just recently, I kind of settled myself on, um, helping people when they, uh, leave the prison system <laughs> and getting themselves like restarted and like back into the, a normal lifestyle and trying to help them from going back into prison. I think that's something I'd love to do or working in nonprofits, just helping adults or even, um, being a therapist. Mm-hmm. Your sister had it with that. Um, you just got to see some. Yeah. My sister was a case manager. 
so she understands the system and how she's seen a lot of like people and correctional officers and how it kind of works just in like a juvie scale. Mm-hmm. So she knows that systems like that exist and that I could work in one. And what is the driving force for that um, for you? Like what? Um, family. Yeah, it's definitely a family I've seen that have gone through the prison mm-hmm. system and or just haven't handled life the best. So there's a personal interest there in, in making the system um, more available to people that don't necessarily get the fair treatment yeah. um, or opportunity. Yes, definitely. Awesome. That's, that's, that's great. I mean, and the reason I ask that is because so a lot of people, um, you know, do things because, Oh, I'm going to make $200,000 or, and that's going to make me happy mm-hmm. or uh, have different various reasons. I enjoy money. Um, and it's not my driving force. Like, I don't want that to be the reason that I do things. And um, yeah. I think it's awesome that you're doing things because it's actually about affecting change than about creating financial wealth. Because I think that um, for me, wealth and abundance comes from a whole lot of different sources other than just dollar bills. So, Yeah, a lot of my uh, friends and peers at school – are very focused on the salary they'll get and the career they're going in and not really like why they want to do it. Yeah. And that's one thing I always want to make sure is because yeah, money helps to be happy. But at the end of the day, if I'm doing something I hate, I'm never going to be happy. Yeah. There's a lot of unhappy people uh, taking the bus or driving the commute Mm -hmm. to places where they don't want to be. And I I think the more we can actually do what we love, do our passion. Um, Now, now funny thing is like, I actually like accounting. Um, you know, people are like, that's, a rare. that's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I actually didn't even want to be an accountant. I was going to be a lawyer. I was going to be a lawyer and it was all set. And then I met lots of lawyers and I went, Oh, I don't want to be a lawyer. <laughs> Sorry to my few lawyer friends. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's important, whatever it is that you enjoy what you do. Um, because you can't take, you can't get that back. Um, if you're miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, now for you, Joanne, what about, um, what, what drives you to do what you do? You've got Happy Harley, um, and like, what is it? What do what are you? What's the fulfillment? Um, for me, I think again finding this little not little industry, but this industry. Um, I have the create. I have a creative side, and it's as crazy as being a producer is and stressful as it is, it's so awesome to be on set and see films being made or being a part of making some iconic image that's out there that everyone's talked in to be involved in that creative process. I, I will admit I'm not at the level of being a photographer to that kind of caliber, but at least being a producer allows me to still be in the industry, still give some creative input because I'm, you know, to help in finding locations, talent, whatever it may be. Um, but I do kind of like the business aspect of it. I'm not a hundred percent business person, but I do like doing this kind of, um, side to it with some creativity. Mm -hmm. What was your, um, what was your most favorite project? Hmm. Um, I think the one that I was, I felt sort of thrown in and came out with a lot of great, um, was I did, um, uh, for a movie poster in Australia, the most recent one I'll do Aquaman. Aquaman. So we got to fly to Australia and not knowing anything about the country, the, what to do, where to go, you know, talking to film crews, which when they hear a photography team's coming in, we're the last person they want to deal with. Right. Um, I think it's just from, from beginning to end, the beginning is very stressful, nerve wracking. Um, Michael can attest to many times where I'm wanting to pull my hair out. Um, but like I said, the final result, the gratification of seeing the image, the people you get to meet and things that I never would have learned creatively had I not been in this industry. Um, all right. This this is for Maddie. Um, is it important to drive a nice car? Um, for me, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have a car in general, so at this point, right now, no. I'll take anything I can get right now. Okay. But I mean, I would want to have a nice car later in life if I can. 
Uh huh. And what would be the benefit of having a nice car? I mean, if it has good gas mileage, I guess. Uh huh. <laughs> but beyond that, I feel like it has a lot to do with people's confidence and or just liking something that they're spending a lot of money on. Okay. And what kind of car would you like to have? Do you know? <laughs> a Jeep. A Jeep. Okay. So not a Lamborghini. No. Nah. Or a <laughs> flashy. Flant, yeah, Range Rover. Or... No, I'm not a flashy person. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, cheap. All right. I Just will admit to being a car snob. I You're love car snob. I love cars. You have a Range yeah. Rover now. Yeah. <laughs> the Range Rover. Okay. But I have the old right. one, the body style, a certain look I liked, not the new one. I'm not lying. Okay. But I not the new one. Love cars. I will admit. Yeah. I love cars. And what's the what's the best part of having a fancy car, for you? For me, I think for me, it's sort of the, for lack of better words, kind of like I made it. Like I worked really hard and I was able to have this car that I've, it was a, a goal and aspiration. I, oh, how great I'd love to have a car like that. My boss had one. I got to drive it. It was awesome. So, of course, yeah. it, it was kind of that. And so when we, my lease ended on my last car, we were looking and we thought, well, I was smart enough to know now not to buy a brand new car because the minute you drive it off the lot, right. it's pointless. Um, exactly. So we started looking at the body styles I love and found one and did my research on mileage. And, you know, it's a 50-50 who you talk to, whether it's a Range Rover's right. a good car or not a good car. Um, and did it. And I was like, woo, woo, one of my goals, Oop. check. Check. Yeah. That is so cool. Um, So you brought up a good point about the car. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, Maddie, listen up. Mm -hmm. Um, You did your research. Mm -hmm. You did your homework. Mm -hmm. So just like in school, when you do your homework, um, you get a better result. Mm -hmm. And I think um, a lot of times for a lot of people, they don't do the research. They just hope or they roll the dice and don't actually get their facts straight before they go and make a big purchase like that. And I've um, done that. Yeah. Oh, you've done mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. Uh, can you but say like, more? No. Yeah. Again, dealing with a car. Um, yeah. There was, we were moving from, uh, when I lived the, from a Q5, I'll just put it out there. So then we okay. went to go to a Ford Flex, which is more like a wagon, but still cool looking, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But we went to the dealership and my bad was assuming or trusting that the person that was selling me the car was <laughs> oh giving me God. all the best things or telling me all the best things. And I, right. you know, I have a certain speed that I like to drive. I have a certain mm-hmm. giddy up that I like my car to have. And this right. one was a little bit less, but I asked him, is there a bigger engine or is there something? And the gentleman didn't said, no, this is it. And then come to find out, you know, after we swapped a better car for that one, um, down the road, there was a bigger engine that I could have had. And there were, you know, some features that I wanted that I could have had that, of course, I'm then kicking myself for not researching about all the cars or all the different right. styles. And from then on, I always, it drives Michael crazy. I'll say I want a car and he's like, okay, great. But I'll, it takes me about six to eight months till I finally say, right, this is it. This is what I want. Because I all go right. I like your thinking. Cons. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I did the mistake. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, that's good. I I still um, I still tell the story about um, I was in the store looking at a TV, and I probably took eight months to buy the TV because I kept going, well, technology is going to change. Right. Um, which is the better one? Do I want plasma? I don't know what plasma is. Right. And I was spending all this time, and I, my sister's an engineer. I made her go with me, and we're and I'm standing there, and this couple right behind me goes, oh. Look, if we buy it today, we save um, we save three thousand bucks. If we buy it today, just put it on the credit card. And I almost had a coronary because you can't make that kind of decision like on a spur of the moment thing, you know. And um, you're not saving any money, right? So I was going through this whole thing because you must do your homework. And so anyway, I just so I love that you do your homework and you take the extra time because I do. <laughs> yeah, because I well, and like I said, being the youngest of five, I've seen, you know, mistakes that siblings have made and, and knowing that I needed to be a little bit sort of put a pause and break 
and right. and figure out is this really the right move where I'd love to just jump and jump in and go with it and roll with it. And I did that and I wasn't happy. So now I didn't work. Pause. Yeah. Well, now at family reunions, do you ever get together and thank all your older siblings for all the mistakes they made so that you could do it better? <laughs> no, but I probably should. I mean, we have had, I'm trying to think, for instance, it was funny with the credit card thing. I remember when my, my brother first got out of college you know, you, you're given these credit cards. They, they, yeah. You're just like candy no, for these companies. Yeah. Austin. And um, I saw how, you know, he bought all these things and it was great. And so then, but then he got into debt. So when I graduated, I was starting to go down the same road as him. He hit it first. And then I was like, pause, put the credit card away and start paying it off and then come back to it. And then I, I honestly figured out that, for me, if I have cash, I spend it faster than if I have a credit card. Yeah. And some people are different. They're they're likely right. to spend faster on credit than cash. And that was another one that I have a credit card and I had bank. And I was like, woo, I put this on the credit card. And woo, I took this from the bank. And then when it was time to pay, I'm like, woo, I don't have enough. Ooh. And that's it, it took me a good year to finally realize what what works better for me because i'm always told you have to have cash in your wallet you have to have cash in you know you gotta 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 and it just wasn't my way of working what piece of advice would you give to a younger version of yourself or to maddie um savings account Mm -hmm. i'm amazed at how many people don't have savings account and savings account where not you have it and you want the shoes and I have this in my savings account, have it as if it doesn't even exist and have $5 or $10 or whatever you can afford each month pulled out of your checking into your savings. Because to do it on your own, it's not going to happen as often. But if you have it automatically done before the year, at the end of each year, you'll look at that savings account and be like, oh, oh my God, I didn't even know I had this. This is awesome. And then from there, you can decide I'll use it towards credit cards. I'll keep putting it in savings. But that's the one, the first easy step, I think, that shows how being fiscally responsible pays off. Yeah, absolutely. And Maddie, what is one thing that you hope to accomplish in the next 10 years uh, around money? I think my main goal would just be uh, to be financially stable enough where I have a savings account where if anything goes wrong, I'm set, but I also have a good credit score. I live in a nice place and I have a car, like, and you have but a Jeep. I'm not, yes, yes, I have my Jeep, but I'm not broke. Like, I but don't you're wanna, not broke. Yeah. Right. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be living off paycheck to paycheck and struggling <laughs> essentially. Mm-hmm. And Beyond 10 years from now, would you like to have a couple million dollars in the bank account or are you more interested in, uh, I mean, that would be nice, but (laughs) (laughs) me too. (laughs) Okay. All right. You know, but are you, but if it, if you had to work really hard for it, if it just showed up, like in other words, um, would you rather be able to have a life full of, okay, helping people and doing that stuff and um, not have the two million bucks or have all that, but have to work extra, extra hard and work, you know, with no vacations, 80 hours a week to get that two million. Would you rather have the time or would you rather have the money? I think I'd rather have the time. Mm. Okay. That's an interesting one. Two million sounds amazing and all of that. But if I work myself to death, what's the point of it? Yeah, I guess is what I have to say. Because then we're all going to reach a point where we're retired. We don't work anymore. We're just older. Um, the only real benefit from that money is it'd go to my kids. But beyond that, my whole life would have just been working and no right. enjoyment of it. Because I mean, you yeah. only get promised one. So yeah, that's what they promise. <laughs> exactly. So, well, listen, it's been great talking with you guys, um, you gals, and. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm in LA now, so I always say you guys. Um, where can people find you on social media? Um, I have a Happy Har- at Happy Harley Productions on Instagram, and then my website is happyharleyproductions.com, or um, my other Instagram is Joe Davidson25. That's my personal that I'll sometimes, depending on if we collaborate in the same way, I'll you know 
say, hey, come on in. All right. So if somebody wants to get a movie made or get something produced, uh, give you a call and your team of people, because um, I know you work with an amazing group of people, um, the powerhouse, um, and uh, get things done. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. And then hopefully, Maddie, you'll have your own nonprofit institute that's going to be uh, changing lives and uh, um, making the world a better place. I hope so. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to it. Um, well, to the listeners, I want to say don't forget to share the love. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search for Money You Should Ask, all one word. You can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast player. Um, Joanne, Maddie, it's been awesome having you on the show. Thank Thanks you, again likewise. to Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you to the Money Nerve for sponsoring the show and uh happy happy Harley Trails. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, talk to y'all later. Okay, bye. Bye.